Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products We Focus. Well, most global markets are off a little bit today on the back of the shock um, Japanese market recession that got called today. Obviously, the GDP figures came out um, and from a very uh, technical standpoint, they are sliding into, or they have slid back into recession. Uh, that's caused some decent moves in dollar yen and the Nikkei, and uh, we have seen a little bit of a sell-off in most global markets. So the Dow is down today. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything too aggressive first thing this morning. Uh, the Nikkei was down th about 3% at one point this morning, but since recovered ever so slightly. But you can see there we've got a, a, a bearish engulfing pattern having appeared in the US 30. Um, any move to the downside might be capped by potential support at 17,433. Um, but nevertheless, we have started um, this week on the back foot. So looking at the UK 100, um, even though it has obviously gapped down lower, we are showing a green candle, so it's already off the session lows ever ever so slightly though if we do get a bit more of a sell-off uh, we are quite close to that 55 period sma and uh, the next potential support is at 6581 uh, technical indicators are overbought you know obviously you've got the slow, the slow stochastic there uh, as firmly into overbought territory the rsi still got room for, ma for maneuver um, so actually I, I i wouldn't expect there to be like a perfect storm right now if there'd be a staunch sell-off but certainly there's a little bit of pressure this morning but nothing too aggressive so looking at Japan 25, obviously you can see where it, ha where it had gone and where it's going to go right now. So what this means for Japan 25 is uh, they're likely to call snap elections um, sooner rather than later. And um, they're also uh, unlikely to increase the, um, the tax and uh, the sales tax in Japan to the uh, to the 10 percent or 12 percent levels that they talked talked about before. They've gone from five to eight, and they've been sitting around for eight for a little while. But um, it doesn't look like they're going to be having that um, that other uh, rise anytime soon. So. Short-term pain, uh, obviously, um, recession calls on Japan to five is not so good. But um, medium-term, it also means that the the government are going to do more stimulus, and you know how much Japanese government love to do stimulus. Um, the elections could be good to help change monetary policy over in that part of the world. Um, so I wouldn't expect there to be you know further moves back down towards potential support at sixteen three ninety six right away. Um, and we were already at like a multi-year high anyway, so um, you know, Nick and I had had uh, a particularly good run. So the fact is we are off the lows today and we're just kind of starting the European session. So uh, I wouldn't be that surprised if, uh, if, it, if it didn't move up that little bit higher later on in today's session. So looking at the dollar yen, um, you can quite clearly see there that we've had an incredibly volatile session. When the GDP figures first came out, the dollar yen went all the way up to 117. Um, but because there's been so much volatility around uh, people selling Japanese um, yen-based stocks, because obviously a lot of foreign investors have been piling into the Japanese stock market and they use the yen as a hedge, so they sell the yen to hedge their their, their positions. Because obviously, if you're a foreign investor, you don't want to have your exposure in yen when the yen's been depreciating. So, a lot of people getting out of Japanese equities today, which has caused this massive volatility in dollar yen as people begin to unwind the dollar yen hedges. Um, but nonetheless, potential support still remains at 114 spot 74. Um, but just the volatility that we're seeing there today is testament to the fact that. Um, it's unlikely to continue to fall in such a such a hard, hard manner as people begin to buy back into the Japan 55 if the European sections begin to consolidate after that little mini sell-off. So looking at crude oil West Texas, um, it's down again. Uh, we had a bit of a, of a bounce back on Friday there before we actually hit $73, which is quite incredible. Um, we got to break below $75, which was the low of we're talking about multi-year lows. You've actually got to go into the weekly charts to see that in a bit more detail. Um, we are on at 75 spot 10 pretty much right now. We're not bouncing off it, so uh, I wouldn't be that surprised. On the end of the day charts, it's, uh, it's slowly just creeping down there as well. I wouldn't be that surprised if we're trading below $75 um, by the time we get to this, the end of the session there today. Um, the longer term potential support still remains at 70 spot 41, but that's a very aggressive level for a West Texas crude. And um, you know the, the, the weaker crude price is obviously hurting Russia. Um, the uh, Saudi Ravens are still uh, dominating the, um, the crude market and they're willing to accept these lower prices to get uh, a much bigger market share. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very interesting to see the geopolitical aspects of this play out. Obviously people dressing up as in, it's all about global, global future demand. Uh, and that Japanese GDP figures today aren't really doing much to uh, to help support crude oil in the short term either. Um, but it's also worth noting that as crude oil begins to keep on getting lower and lower, there are certain aspects, and especially in regards to uh, exploration and production in other parts of the world, that it doesn't make it profitable to go for some of those um, oil oil areas when crude is trading at such a low level. So it does have a bit of a knock-on effect in some certain areas, though obviously it does help 
most other global markets because West Texas crude is seen to be a kind of a bit of a, ta a, bit of a tax on global markets. Obviously, a lower tax is better to spur on demand. So, gold had a big, uh, big increase there on Friday. Um, we are on the right side of 1180, which is now acting as well as resistance, now expected to act as potential support. We bounced off that 21 period SMA. Uh, I'm still not really that excited by gold. I think the pressure is still there. That the US dollar will still gain momentum uh, longer term. And if you have a look at Euro dollar right there, um, got a bit of a doji formation uh, appearing right here. It's failed to break through that 21 period SMA. Look at one spot 24.98 as a potential support. To be honest, Euro dollar is not that exciting today either, specifically because of that potential support level. Okay, GBP USD, however, is a, is a little bit better considering that we broke down below potential uh, support, one spot 57.42. Now expected to act as potential resistance, which it looks like it is exactly done today. So we've had a retracement and a move back down to the downside. So that potentially means if that is a true retracement and we still begin to uh, to show some downwards momentum, one spot 54.24 is the next potential support on GBP USD. This is probably one of the more exciting FX pairs to have a look at just now, especially if you've got that, that longer term uh, US dollar strength view in mind, uh, this could be good to look at, especially when you consider how overextended dollar yen is and the uncertainty over um, that, uh, that GDP figure that's coming out today. So to finish up, economic data wise, and we have to actually look at Monday would be a good start. Not much today, fast forward on to tomorrow, loads of UK stuff, so that'd be good if you're looking at a GBP USD trade. So you've got a CPI and PPI. Um, then we do also have US PPI as well. And if you go on to Wednesday there, okay, not, not so much. So Tuesday seems to be the big day in regards to fundamentals. Keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.